So recently I've been asked a lot of questions about buying a certain stock and I've not bought this stock for a while. It's an old favorite on the channel and I've had a lot of questions going, is there any chance you're gonna start buying it soon because it's still doing absolutely amazing and it's really cheap valuation. And I thought, you know what? We're not talked about it, so let's stick a dedicated video on the channel. So I hope you guys enjoy it who have been asking for this video because it does look a pretty good opportunity right now. So if you could hit the like button if you're new on here, subscribe, and let's take a look at this old favorite of the channel. So the old favorite of the channel is Inmode. I've been in this stock for over three years now and it's been a very good performer in the portfolio. I first started buying Inmode around 2020 and since that time frame, the stock has done absolutely amazing. And in fact, at one point, the stock was actually up from when I started buying 5x it was a five bagger in that time frame and anyone that bought in that time frame would have made a good amount of money and for me as well i was actually selling during this time frame for me i was up over 300 percent on in mode i remember at the time people were saying to me like why are you selling some of your shares i didn't sell it all but i just took a bit of profit off the table because i just went sometimes you know when your stocks are absolutely amazing like this you don't, you don't know if there's going to be something that kind of goes on the in the economy or if the stock market crashes and I was taking a bit of profit off the table and I remember making very good in money on in mode. And then we have had that reality check in the share price and it's come down because we did enter the stock market crash in 2022. But you do look at in mode and it was one of those stocks that got caught up in the stock market crash even though financially it was doing absolutely amazing. So when you've got a company that's get caught up and punished because the whole market's going down but yet you look at the financials and they aren't deteriorating at all, then that is where you get those opportunities. And when you do look at InMode, basically year to date now, the stock is down 3%, even though financially it's been crushing it. So is there an opportunity now to buy this stock once again at good valuations and make good money on it? And I also wanna say like, I think this is sometimes what people don't appreciate. Like you look at the stocks and you know, when you buy a stock, you can go down 30, 40, 60%. But this is the really, good side about stock market investing and longer term investing is that if you do buy a stock and you do hold it for the long term and that stock does absolutely perform amazing, you don't just go up 100%, you can go up 200%, 300%, 400% and that is where you get the really big returns and the really big money there and that's what happened to me with InMode. Now during that time frame, I have been averaging up on the position so the shares that I did use to buy in 2020 I don't still hold the average around $13. So I would be up over 142% on that stock right now if I just held the shares that I did from 2020. For me, I want to make as much money in the stock market as possible. It's not about going, oh, look, I'm up 142% on this position. I want to make the most amount of money. So for me, I have been averaging up on in mode to try and make the most money possible in this. So for me, I look at this company and going, I still think financially this company is one of the best opportunities out there. So I'm going to average up and average up. Now, that does mean that I still sit, I think, about 80% up on this position. But it does show you that for me, that's where my mentality is at. Now, it is a smaller market cap company it's a 2.8 billion market cap company and we know the small caps are being hit the hardest at the moment so that's probably playing into it 15 times earnings so you look at that there you think it's below the market average of 20 so that puts you into context of what the valuation is now in mode if it's your first time watching this and you're kind of working out what they do so basically they make treatments to improve your appearance now they've got a few treatments but a quick overview would be something like this here where you wanted the treatment where you're unhappy with your neck you think oh i'm not happy with the appearance uh, i want to get this altered and rather going through the traditional methods where you go under the knife you get put to sleep you can go in for these treatments with in mode and you go to one of the medical providers that has bought this equi equipment for in mode and rather than being under the knife and put to sleep you can go in and go out the same day not have to worry about any of that and you can use some of their treatments that are a lot more comfortable and safer treatments and say you can see these photos here of someone's neck before the treatments and then after the treatments uh, there's also another one here which is one on the face as you can see here the face and neck you can see a before and after photo so you can see this is probably something really popular that's going to carry on you know people are coming more aware about their appearance especially with the social media environment that we're in and also people are getting more cautious about having to go under the under the knife for treatments as well so this is going to be in my opinion a, you know a good space in the next kind of few years now maybe that's why the share price has been a little bit flat at the moment that maybe the market is worried that 
we are moving into a more of a negative environment. We saw the marketing issue the other day uh, with S4 Capital, for example. You've seen the slowdown in the economy and people were, okay, if there's a slowdown in the, co- uh, in, the, in the economy, are people going to be more reluctant to go get these sort of procedures done? Maybe that's what's kind of causing the concerns out there at the moment, but without doubt, in my opinion, the valuation has baked in a lot of that negativity at the moment and for me i'm not worried about where this is going to be in the next kind oh there's going to be a bit of a slowdown in the next 12 months i look at the longer term of three four five years and i think that it's still going to be a very big area in the next three or four or five years now the light latest earnings you'd think as well like look at the share price the maybe the company has posted bad earnings recently and if you do go look at the latest earnings you would think maybe that the share price is being flat because the earnings are being poor if we do look at the recent earnings which was on the 27th of july which if we actually pinpoint on the share price was here so since these earnings the stock is actually down 27 so 23 percent since these earnings but if you actually look at the last earnings so if we have a look so the beat on eps the beat by 0.06 so that's a really good beat on the eps you look at revenue, revenue revenue grew nearly, we'll call it 20%, you know, 90.8%, let's call it 20%. You know, 20%, so you beat on EPS by a major amount, you know, you're talking nearly 10% beat on EPS, 20% revenue growth, you beat by 3.5 million, so that's a massive beat as well. And then you hike up your outlook as well. So you hike up your outlook and your guidance and your EPS. So you have a triple B on the earnings growing at 20% year over year and you're trading at 15 times earnings. I know, it, it, it's, it's, it's mind blowing how crazy that is. Now, in mode itself normally brings out preliminary earnings. So if you look at last year, they actually brought preliminary earnings out on the 13th. Uh, normally it, it does cause the stock to go up, but recently it has been causing it to go up, but then it gives it all back. So that's the date to kind of put in your diary. But looking at the recent earnings as well, you know, when you look past the headline numbers, which were absolutely fabulous, you get further into the numbers and they're even more impressive. One of the big things around in mode is that people always used to say well it's only a one product sale you know if you sell your product of in mode you sell these equipment and devices to do these treatments you never have any reoccurring revenue now for in mode they've started to address that and if you actually look to the recent earnings you can see here a record quarter from consumables and service of 21 million an increase from 44 percent year on year so the big one of the big red flags that in mode always had it was it never an issue for me but this is something that a lot of the bears used to say about it. Obviously, that's you know disappearing right now. And this is the crazy thing. Look at this total cash position of six hundred and twenty-nine million. Whew. You know, you look at the gross margins. They they currently make it. The gross margins went from you know when you think if they can't get any higher, they went from eighty-three percent up to eighty-four percent. You look at the net income. The net income went from forty-four million up to fifty-five million. This company is throwing off great growth, unbelievable gross margins, unbelievable net income, and it's all going on the balance sheet, and they're now sitting on 629 million of cash. I mean, look at the market cap, 2.8 billion. That's crazy. The amount of cash they've got on there, that's absolutely crazy. And just to put that into context, how good that looks on a revenue and profit basis, I mean, just look at the historic revenue growth of this business. Look at the profit they're generating. Look at the profit margins they have on the business. That is unbelievable. That is a premium, premium company. And then once again, you're looking at this going, but when you look at the company, it's trading at 15 times earnings, which is the mind-blowing thing. Now, when we do look at what analysts are expecting, analysts are expecting this year to grow at 18.5%. Uh, I think that'll be hiked up by the end of the year. We'll probably be closer to 20%. And you can see here that the profit or the EPS is going to once again go up by another 10% on EPS. If you look at sales growth, it's forecast to grow at 15.4%. So the growth is slowing down a little bit, which is natural for a company that's getting bigger and bigger. I would actually say that I expect Inmo to grow more than 15%. I would actually expect Inmo to probably be more towards the 16, 17% next year. But either way, even if it's 15, even if it's 16, even if it's 17%, when you're growing at them sort of rates with that profitability and that balance sheet, and you are saying at 15 times earnings, it's just absolutely crazy. Now, I guess, you know, you're looking at that going, well, why, why is it, why is Wall Street sleeping on it? Why are people not buying it at the moment? And I guess, like I said, it maybe comes down to the fears of, the recession creeping in and people won't go for uh, these treatments anymore or companies won't buy the products and the services from InMode. Maybe it comes down to the fact that 
people are looking at in mode and going, you know, you've got all this cash on your balance sheet, why don't you do anything with it? Now, I won't say that's a major issue, but I would say to the management team, the one improvement that I would have with this company is that you've got the share prices at historic low valuations and you're on fire and you're generating all this profit and you're sitting on, you know, 629 million of cash. You know, when, when do you want to see management buying back shares? It's when the company is cheap. This is the perfect time to buy shares back. You know, if you throw 200 million right now into a buyback, you know, that, that's absolutely amazing. You know, you're taking really good advantage. Now, Inmode have said they actually are looking for an acquisition and that's why they're holding back the cash at the moment. Fair enough, I can understand that. But even right now, even if you're looking for an acquisition, if I was in mode right now, I would be chucking at least, you know, 30 million into an, a buyback of shares because what you'd get for 30 million at the moment with your shares at these sort of levels would be a, you know very very good value in my opinion so I, if i were in mode i would at least be chucking some money into a share buyback right now and that's my only criticism that i have on it and if my only cri criticism is that they make that much profit and have that much cash on the balance sheet <laughs> it's not too bad of an issue so let's have a look at the valuation and see where we could see in mode going. And by the way, if you do want some free shares, join Trading Tone 2 with a link in the description. You can get a free share worth up to 100 pounds. That's currently the broker that I use. Now, looking at in mode, they have recently started trading at a lower valuation. You can see here when the company did IPO, it IPO'd at around 23 times earnings, up to 26, 26, up to 32. Uh, the share price went a little bit extended, as you saw, at 45 times earnings. You know, that's a big thing. What really helps share prices is trading at richer valuations. Then it went down to 36 and then it went all the way down to 11 and that's the last time I started buying actually was around 2022. It started to get to a bit more of a fair valuation but it's been hanging around this level for a while. So really I think when you talk about a company that is trading at these sort of levels with this growth and profitability and balance sheet, you're a premium company. You know, you should be paying it, paying it a premium for this. You shouldn't be paying the market average for this. So I'm going to look at, I'm also going to be including that in a second. So let's have a look at in mode. So I've done no share buybacks because they aren't buying back shares, even though I think they should do. Um, I've put revenue growth of 8, 10, 12% in. Now, like we said, they've been growing at 20 plus percent. The growth is forecast to drop to 15. So I'm forecasting more of a slowdown in revenue growth. So that's quite conservative in my opinion. Profit margins, 32, 34, 36%. Now, when we do look at in mode's previous profit margins, they have been in and out a little bit so it's a little harder to predict that we did get all the way up to 40 plus percent profit margins now they're currently sitting around 36 percent profit margins so i've gone up a little bit conservative here at 30 plus percent you could argue they're going to improve this more going forward so once again i've been a little bit conservative in the numbers total earnings i've put a multiple of 20 in now obviously that's that market average and i think a company that is 12 percent revenue growth with 36% profit margins, should at least be the market average valuation. And you can see here on the low side, you've still got a lot of room for safety. Mid size, 75% upside. On the high side, around about 99% upside. So that is obviously looking pretty attractive. And that's with some conservative numbers. Now, like I said, for me, when you're a company that is doing these sort of numbers, you're a premium company. And I think that sooner or later, in mode will get that respect on the valuation. So let's actually put a multiple of 30 times earnings in. So you can see here for a 30 times earnings, that is where you start getting your upside. You know, you could be talking a lot of more upside. You know, I'm talking nearly 200% upside on the high side. Side. So that's the key thing. We need to see the market actually start valuing in mode at more of a premium, and that, that's where you get your bigger return. So for me at the moment, I've already got a big allocation into in mode, so I'm quite happy with my position at the moment. But if I weren't in in mode, I'd probably be a buyer at these sort of levels for sure. Now, for me, that does have a position already built up, where will I buy in mode? So the big thing where I would buy in mode is either a they do something with the cash, so they do announce a share buyback, and then the upside will be even higher, and then I can buy some more there. Or they do make an acquisition and they use that cash, and all of a sudden, your numbers will be totally mega different, and the upside will be a, a lot more with, that, with, with an acquisition uh, factored in there. Or the other point is that if the market goes completely nuts and sells it down at a, a ridiculously low valuation, let's say the market wipes another 20% off in mode and I update those numbers just here, that's where I would probably start buying because even on the low side, you're talking where you can easily get 100% return from it. So for me, 
I look at this and think at the moment I rate it a buy. If I didn't have a position, I'd probably be a buyer because I've got a position. I think I can afford to get it a little bit cheaper. So those are the two tilting points where I personally come a buyer again is either it comes cheaper, another 20% drop, which I think if we do hit a recession, we pr probably would get that. Uh, if the company starts using that cash pile for buybacks or d using acquisition, that will change the numbers once again completely. And that's where for me that already has a position, that's what would get me to buy some more shares anyway. So kind of two scenarios there that I would, what I would do if I wasn't investing if, and where I currently actually do stand at the moment. But overall, I've got to say, you know, to see this company here that is absolutely on fire at 15 times earnings, you know, growing double digit, you know, talking 20% more than likely this year you're growing profit at really good rates you've got a clean balance sheet 600 million in cash you've got profit margin of 36 times uh 60 36 percent it i've just it's it's really strange to see something like this and the only thing you're left with is you're seeing does someone know something that we don't know and you, i've been saying that for like the last two years I've gone does the market know something we don't know as investors uh, of in mode and you know and all they've done is once again defy logic and grow at insane rates and profitability even though the share price doesn't reflect it so either we're all getting taken for mugs here or oh, this is a standout opportunity in the stock market for sure so yeah once again i'm still holding in mode i think they've got a great future i would rate it a buy and for me if i can get it at the right levels i will be once again a buyer uh, and you saw last time you know the last time i was a buyer is when the market set this down to 11 times earnings and i was like this is crazy that's the last time i was a buyer personally and i think it could have once again a, a fantastic five years upcoming for the business hope you enjoyed the video as always guys hit the like button if you're new around here subscribe and for you guys that wanted a video on in mode i hope it was useful see you later